Well, welcome to the morning call. Countries opposed to the investigations of human rights abuse based on gender and sexual orientation by the United Nations have now once again failed to remove the independent expert tasked with the role. June saw the United Nations vote to install Thai professor Vitit Mutabaton, but countries like Burkina Faso, including Russia and China, have been pushing for an amendment that will scrap off the role of the expert, where 77 voted for Vitit to lose his job and the 84 others voted to keep him. Now, according to the International Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Trans and Intersex Association, Association ILGA, which tracks LGBTI policy around the world, nearly 80 countries and entities punish LGBTI's population with impris imprisonment or death penalty. Burkina Faso, on behalf of African countries, has estimated there is no legal basis on the mandate, no international recognition that sexual orientation and gender identity are part of human rights. This is not a matter of not trying to impose values on the South. It's a question of respect, respect for dignity and human rights for everyone everywhere, said Samantha Powers, American U ambassador cousin, accusing African countries and their allies for clinging to a procedure to hide. Well, online is an expert who will help us understand what this means for Africa and these values. Morning, Benji. Benji's on the line. He's joining us right now. The continent just lost a fight to cancel the appointment, Benji, of an expert on the rights of homosexuals. How does this resonate around you? Well, I think that our state devrait I think that our state should agree on issues of much higher priority, for example, for example, so that there are no dictators, people who confiscate democracy, people who confiscate elections. This is not terminated by African, um, African Union at the level of the United Nations. It would be a fight that I would support, for example, the fight to make drink, drinking water available for all Abbey inhabitants. Unfortunately, this is not done, even in countries that are full of water sources, resources. Nothing is done in this regard, and this is not subject to specific claim. Now, uh, Professor, must Africa accept uh, homosexuality as, uh, as it is, uh, and yet culturally uh, across the continent, is, uh, the idea has a difficulty to pass within our own societies? Absolutely, this is a matter of culture, it's true. But I think the issue of culture, the question of imposing it on all, on all the inhabitants of the world, it becomes a problem too, I think. We need to do. I think what we need to do is to ensure that our societies are secular and that they are not orientated in a specific religion. Because right now, we are going to get into conflicts or conflicts of religion. This is not all. This is not profitable for our societies. Because it's true that we're not. Uh, what is not tolerated in our society may not necessarily be rejected. We receive people who are of different religion, we receive personalities who are of different practices, social practices. We have never demanded that. We have never demanded of them for their access to be denied, for example. So I think we should pretty moderate. There should be moderation, moderation on this issue. Now, Professor, do you think does the will of, uh, rather, does the drive by the UN to impose its will on the acceptance of homosexuality in Africa, uh, or rather, by its governments and the several governments that we have, it's, is it likely to cause some? tension. I think what we can do, we remain um, sovereign states, which means that this personality may, personality may be denied access to the territories. We have that right. We cannot prevent the United Nations from appointing that person. There are two things we need to distinguish. One thing is to appoint the personality, another is to accept the personality within the state. The states are sovereign and cannot. This gentleman, 
who cannot accept we cannot accept him in our territorial space so it's in my opinion since there's no solution and just before we let you go professor Theophile, uh do you think the african continent will one day embrace and uh, come to tolerate the gay and lesbian community I'm convinced, I believe, over time, I think they will eventually, they will eventually. We have not sufficiently demanded our national culture, defended our national cultures. From the moment we have not sufficiently defended our national heritage against the invasion of foreign cultures, not to speak of the recognition of mentalities through defense of certain values, which are quite foreign to us. We can say that reasonably with time it will. It may be too early today, but I'm sure that in about 25 years, in the quarter of a century, the issue will not have the same intensity as it is today. The director of the Institute of Pan-African Studies, Professor Theophile Balima, thank you for joining us on the morning call. Now we'll be right back with a look at what's